Hello, my name is Carla Saboda. I write documentation for the Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services product. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the SQL Server agent to automate the execution of a SQL Server Integration Services package. You'll learn how to create a proxy account that runs the package as a SQL Server agent job step, create the job and the job step, and create a schedule for running the job. The first step to configuring SQL Server Agent to run a package is to open SQL Server Management Studio and connect to the SQL Server database engine. The account that runs the package as a job step must have all the same permissions as an account that runs the package directly in order to access any external resources that the package needs to access. Otherwise, the job will not execute. You can use the existing SQL Server Agent service account or create a SQL Server Agent proxy account to run the package as a job step. In this demonstration, we'll create a proxy account. To create a proxy account, you must be a member of the sysadmin fixed server role or you must be a member of the SQL Agent operator role, SQL Agent reader role, or SQL Agent user role in the MSDB database. You create a proxy account by running a Transact SQL query or by using the new proxy account dialog box in SQL Server Management Studio. We'll use the new proxy account dialog box. On the general page, you specify the name and credential for the new proxy account. We'll name the account package proxy and select an existing credential called User1 that contains the authentication information. Keep in mind that the selected credential must enable SQL Server Agent to run the job as the account that created the package or as an account that has the required permissions. You also need to specify the subsystem for which the proxy is enabled. Each subsystem listed here is represented by a job step type. Because we'll select the SQL Server Integration Services package type when we configure the job step, for the proxy account we'll select the SQL Server Integration Services package subsystem. The proxy description is optional. On the Principles page, you add or remove roles to grant access to the proxy account. Members of the sysadmin fixed server role have automatic access. Now we'll click OK to save our settings. The user1 credential we specified for the proxy account is listed under the credentials node in the Object Explorer. You can create a new credential by running a Transact SQL query or by using the New Credentials dialog box. Now that you've created the proxy account, you're ready to create the job and add a step for the package you want to run. To run multiple packages, you would create a step for each package. Before you can create a job, SQL Server Agent service must be running. If this icon appears next to SQL Server Agent in the Object Explorer tree, the service is disabled. In this case, we'll right-click the SQL Server Agent node to restart the service. You create a job and job step by calling a stored procedure or by using the new job dialog box. We'll use the new job dialog box. First, you configure the job properties on the general page. You need to specify the name of the job and confirm that the owner and category settings are accurate. And you have the job option of providing a job description. We'll name the job Integration Services Package. We'll accept the other defaults and we'll make sure that the Enable checkbox is selected so that the job can be scheduled. 
Next, you add a job step on the steps page and configure the properties. We'll name the job step Basic Package. Because we're running a package using a version of the DTX utility automatically invoked by the system, we'll select the SQL Server Integration Services Package type. When the job runs, the 32-bit or 64-bit version of the utility is automatically invoked, depending on the computer processor and the versions of SQL Server and SQL Server Agent that are running on the computer. In this demonstration, 32-bit versions of SQL Server Agent and SQL Server are running on a 32-bit computer. Therefore, the 32-bit version of the utility is invoked. You have the option of invoking the 32-bit version of the utility on a 64-bit computer when 64-bit versions of SQL Server and SQL Server Agent are installed. You do this simply by selecting the Use 32-bit Runtime option on the Execute Options tab. This is a new feature in SQL Server 2008. In the Run As list, we'll select the proxy account we created earlier, which runs the package as a SQL Server Agent job step. Next, on the General tab, you select the package source, which can be SQL Server, the SSIS package store, or the file system. In this demonstration, the package is stored in the file system. You have the option of specifying a number of command line options for the job step, such as adding configurations, updating the data source connection strings, and adding log providers. We'll add a log provider to write log entries for events to a SQL Server database by using a connection manager in the package. The Destination Connection OLEDB Connection Manager connects to the AdventureWorks 2008 SQL Server database. Now that you've created the SQL Server Agent job and added a job step, you're ready to schedule the job. We'll click OK to save the job set step settings and then click Schedules. You can select an existing schedule or you can create a new one. You need to specify the schedule name and when and how often the job will run. We'll name the schedule Integration Services Package Schedule. And we'll configure the job to run once a day at 5 p.m. until the end of the month. So we'll set schedule type to reoccurring. We'll set occurs to daily. We'll set occurs once at 5 p.m. And we'll set the end date to the last date of the month. To enable the schedule, make sure that the Enable checkbox is selected. We'll click OK to save our settings and click OK again. The system will now automatically execute the package on a set schedule using the proxy account we created to run the job. You could also run a job anytime outside the time frame set by the schedule, which we'll do now, by right-clicking the job and clicking Start Job at Step. Because the job we created contains only one job step, the job starts immediately. Otherwise, we would need to select which step to start the job at. As you can see, the job successfully executed the package. You can use SQL Server Agent to execute a package that is stored on your local machine, as we did in this demonstration, or to execute a package that is stored on another machine. Keep in mind that regardless of where the package is stored, it will run on the same machine as the SQL Server Agent that invokes the package. This video demonstrated how to create a proxy account that runs a package as a SQL Server Agent job step, create the job and the job step, and create a schedule for running the job. 
Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you have found this of value and will return to the website to view other Microsoft SQL Server videos. Thank you.